actually get an Agoric environment started up. Um, we won't go into too much details in terms of code, but we will get into the logistics of how to start things with your software. So as uh, Roland said, we'll be taking questions on YouTube Live and Discord, and he'll surface them to me in the presentation if you want to ask during the presentation. Um, we're going to start with walking through the before using Agoric documentation. Uh, this is on the Getting Started Guide um, on the website, the agoric.com documentation website. Uh, we're going to start an Agoric client and the chain. Uh, so this is just the simulated environment, which allows you to do rapid development without having to actually fire up chain nodes and run a, a billion different processes. And finally, we'll do a kind of hello world of how to interact from the Agoric client to the chain. First, you're going to need a Unix-like environment. So we then have to install Node.js and finally Yarn1. Um, for a Unix-like environment, we usually use macOS. Uh, Linux is also good. Uh, there, there are just a couple minor details about which uh, Node.js packages you can use. And uh, for Windows, we currently only work with Weasel, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So um, we hope to support Windows fully at some point, but uh, currently you need to in install that Windows subsystem. Um, I don't have instructions for how to do that right now, uh, but if you Google for it, you should be able to find how to do it. So with Node.js, we want to start with version 12, 14, 1 or higher. Uh, and 14x also works well. 13 doesn't for us. Uh, it won't work with the test suites we use. Um, also, you should use the official distribu distribution if you can. Um, it, it, uh, the, the one you install from the Node.js.org website is, uh, is the one that works best for your platform in general. Um, if you don't want to install it that way, that's okay. So the one trick with the Linux side is you don't want to install the Node.js snap because it can't build add-ons, which we currently rely on. So installing Yarn1. Uh, yes, we want Yarn1. Usually this is a, a, a bundle with the Node.js package that you use. And some things work with Yarn2, but not every DAP works with Yarn2. So it's best to just stick with Yarn1. So I'm just going to show you here the versions that I have installed. Uh, I have 12.18.3 and Yarn 1 point something. That's all good. For installing the Agoric SDK, we want to open up a shell, like I've already shown, um, clone the Agoric SDK from Git, and update the SDK uh, with the latest version. So uh, a shell prompt, you basically need something like bash or uh, Z shell should also work. And you want to look for your system's terminal app, just like I have open here. Uh, so this is bash that I'm currently running. Um, and you can basically use any directory as your starting point for where to download the code and to install things. So we'll start with cloning the Agoric SDK. You uh, want to run it if you haven't already done it. Otherwise, you can just skip to the next step. So let's look at what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to make a code directory and then change into it and finally do the git clone. So this will take a little bit of time. I'll just fast forward here. And cd into that Agoric SDK directory we just created. And finally, check out the hackathon branch. Uh, that's the step here, where we're basically going to check out the hackathon branch. Um, you will need to update this hackathon branch if you're advised by the work team that we need to roll out an upgrade, or if you have an old Agoric SDK before this is done. Um, so the last step you want to do is a git pull after you've checked out the branch. That's the update step. And we're up to date. So next thing we want is to install Agoric CLI with yarn install, yarn build, and then uh, yarn install just installs the libraries that we need. And after you've upgraded or pulled the, the, Git, um, the Git repository, 
then you want to run a yarn install just to pick up any of the latest dependencies. This can take a little while, so I'm going to fast forward it quite a bit. Um, notably, building the, the native packages takes a while. So I'm just fast forwarding it, but this actually does take 65 seconds as it said. Um, so the yarn build step is just to compile some of the JavaScript files that we have. We're trying to eliminate this so it doesn't take a build anymore, but uh, some packages still need that in the Agoric SDK. So this is what it looks like. Um, yarn build. I'll just fast forward this one as well. And finally, uh, after, after you do the yarn install, you only really need to do the yarn build again without installing is uh, after an upgrade or if you change Zoe's contract facet or the wallet UI. You'll know if you do this because it's a more advanced thing. Um, that's the only time when you actually need to rerun the yarn build to get the effect of the changes. And installing the Agorg CLI, uh, we're going to do this with sudo to install it in the user local bin directory. So link CLI. And this just creates a script for us and populates it. So you can install it in other directories besides user local bin if you're a more advanced user. Uh, it's just a matter of putting it somewhere where it's on your path. Finally, we can start to create a dot project with a simulated chain and play with some JavaScript in the REPL. This is what a dot project is started with. Now that we've created that Agoric CLI, we can run Agoric init hello. Uh, this is how it goes. We'll go back to our code directory. Uh, because Agoric CLI is in the path, we can be in any directory when we do this. Agoric init hello will create a subdirectory containing the DAP. Um, so that's just a couple things. Uh, and when we go into the hello directory, we can do an install. And uh, this builds the dependencies and links to the existing Agoric SDK. So I'm just going to fast forward past here too. Um, it's going to build some more. It's going to build some packages. Um, and install the link packages. Okay, uh, that's all good. Uh, finally, we want, after the Agoric install, we want to move on to start a simulated chain. So this is the part that I don't have on recording. I'll just show it to you live. So if we run Agoric start, um, I'll do a reset just because I want to have a fresh slate. And this basically starts up the Agoric VM, uh, and it'll tell you when it started to run. Uh, I'm just going to put this in the background and say agoric open. Um, agoric open dash dash repl. So when we open the repl, that actually starts our web browser up with an access to the read eval print loop. This is the interactive command line. Um, that allows us to interact with the chain. So up above here, we see the Agoric wallet. Uh, and this is all connected. It says testnet currency, but it's currently connected to the simulator chain only. Um, now in the Agoric CLI, uh, we can essentially run JavaScript commands. So let's take a look at a couple of things we can do. There's a regular console log, and it's just displaying in the little REPL down here. We can look at the home object, which contains a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is JSON formatted up, except for these presences. Presences are things like um, remote objects that you can access through the, the CLI. So from home, we see that. Let's look at the Agoric object, which is a subset of those services. 
Hey, Michael. Uh, so we did get one request. I don't know if it's possible to increase font size on any of your windows here, but if possible, uh, do you mind zooming in? Yeah, I can do that here. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so the Agoric on-chain services, uh, an interesting thing here is that we have a price authority. So if we look at authority, we see that it's a presence. And we can run a tilde dot, which is this remote invocation form of the dot operator. So I can, uh, let's run the non-existent help object. And it'll tell us, oh, price authority doesn't have a method hope, help. It has these different methods that we'll introduce later on with how the chain link integration fits together. But then we can do something like actually get a, a quote. Oh, of course I didn't do that right. Anyway, the point is you can wander around these little objects and use them as you would. Um, this is essentially a JavaScript environment, except it's a bit different in that it only has deterministic things. So if I try doing a math.random, I'll just get, sorry, it's not a function. Uh, if I try doing date.now, It doesn't return anything. But you can still use most of the APIs that are there. Uh, these ones have just been removed because they're non-deterministic, and we can't have that on the chain. So this is the wallet. We'll give you a tour of that in a later presentation. Um, I can now go back and answer any questions that there are. Uh, this was the quick way of se setting up the Agoric environment. Um, so. That's the last bit of the REPL, just a basic introduction. Uh, and finally, we have a hackathon documentation and the actual code for the SDK. So I recommend working through the Getting Started Guide. It'll tell you how to do all these things. And 